Welcome to Little Morton Hall, a marvel of medieval architecture and a fascinating relic of England's storied past. Nestled in the heart of Cheshire, this iconic manor house has stood the test of time, offering a window into the lives of the Tudor gentry. Join me as we explore the history, architecture and secrets of this extraordinary place. The story of Little Morton Hall begins in the early 16th century. Commissioned by the wealthy landowner William Morton around 1504, this house was more than just a residence, it was a status symbol. The Morton family, like many others of their time, wanted to display their wealth and social standing through their home. The construction spanned several decades, with William Morton's son, also named William, adding significant expansions. William Morton, the elder, started the construction around 1504, but it was his son, also called William, who expanded the hall significantly in the 1540s and 1550s. These additions included the iconic Long Gallery and the South Range. The Mortons were a prominent family, and their house reflected their ambitions and standing in society. Little Morton Hall is a textbook example of Tudor architecture, characterized by its timber frame construction. The black and white pattern created by the exposed wooden beams filled with wattle and daub is striking and distinctive. This was a time before the use of brick became widespread, so timber framing was both a practical and aesthetic choice. One of the hall's most remarkable features 
is its collection of ornately decorated windows. These large mullioned windows were not only a sign of wealth, glass was expensive, but also a way to flood the interiors with light, a rare luxury in the Tudor period. The windows were installed in phases, reflecting the hall's evolving construction over the years. Living in Little Morton Hall during the Tudor era was both opulent and challenging. The Morton family would have enjoyed lavish feasts in their great hall, complete with roasted meats, pies, and perhaps a goblet or two of ale. However, life wasn't all grand. The hall had no modern heating or plumbing, and winters could be harsh and unforgiving. The Mortons would have relied on large hearths and tapestries for warmth. Imagine the great hall filled with the sounds and smells of a Tudor feast. The Mortons would entertain guests with music, dance and hearty meals. The high table, reserved for the family and distinguished guests, would be laden with delicacies, while the lower tables were for lesser visitors and servants. Look closely at the detailed carvings and the intricate patterns. These were crafted by skilled artisans and were designed to impress visitors, showcasing the Morton family's taste and wealth. Each beam and joint tells a story of craftsmanship and artistry that has withstood the test of time. We're now in the Long Gallery, a staple of Grand Tudor homes. Stretching the entire length of the upper floor, this space was used for exercise, entertaining, and as a display area for the family's art and curiosities. Notice how the floor dips and sways. This is due to the building's age and the settling of its wooden frame over centuries. The gallery, completed around 1560, was a later addition, demonstrating the Morton family's continued prosperity. During the Tudor period, the Long Gallery was not just a place for walking during bad weather, but also a social hub where family members and guests would gather. It was a place to display the family's wealth through portraits, tapestries, and other valuables.
Throughout its history, Little Morton Hall has faced numerous challenges. By the 17th century, the Morton family fortunes had waned, and the hall fell into disrepair. The once grand estate struggled through periods of neglect and changing ownership. It wasn't until the 20th century that efforts to restore and preserve this architectural gem truly began in earnest. During the Victorian era, Little Morton Hall was at risk of being lost to time. It was only through the efforts of historians and conservationists that the hall was saved. In 1938, it was placed in the care of the National Trust, which has worked diligently to preserve its unique character and history. One of the biggest challenges has been addressing the structural issues caused by the building's age. The timber frame has warped and settled over time, and restoration work must preserve the original materials while ensuring the hall remains safe for visitors. Little Morton Hall is not only rich in history, but also in folklore. Over the years, many have reported ghostly sightings and eerie occurrences. One popular legend speaks of the Grey Lady, believed to be the spirit of a former resident who roams the halls at night. These stories add an extra layer of mystique to this already enchanting place. According to legend, the Grey Lady is said to be the ghost of one of the Morton family members who died tragically. Her spirit is believed to walk the halls, especially on stormy nights. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, these tales contribute to the hall's rich tapestry of history and mystery. One of the more fascinating aspects of Little Morton Hall is the presence of apotropaic marks or witch marks. These symbols were carved into the woodwork and door frames to protect the inhabitants from evil spirits and witchcraft. In a time when superstitions were rife, these marks were believed to ward off malevolent forces. These marks include symbols like circles, crosses, and even intricate patterns, all intended to trap or repel evil spirits. It's a reminder of the blend of fear and faith that shaped the daily lives of people in Tudor England. The Morton family, despite their wealth and status, shared in these common beliefs and practices. Thank you for joining me on this tour. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more adventures into history's most fascinating places. See you next time.